Hello everyone. So by now you're probably convinced that studying limits is important because both for calculating derivatives and calculating integrals we had to evaluate limits. So now what we'll do is just take a step back and study limits carefully and uh, see how we can evaluate limits in many different circumstances. Okay, so let's go back to the informal definition of limits that I gave you in the first week. So we say that the limit of a function f of x as x approaches a is equal to a value l if we can make the values of the function f of x arbitrarily, arbitrarily close to l by taking x sufficiently close to a, but not equal to a. So the, the limit here is really about the, the behavior of the function f of x near x equals to a, but not exactly at x equals to a. All right, so let's look at an example. So I have a crazy looking function here in my graph. Now I can look at different points. For example, I could take the point 1 half here and see what happens as x goes to 1 half. Well, in this case, the value of the function at 1 half is something. I'm not sure what this is. It's going to be given by the y-coordinate of this point. So it's going to be, let's call this a. And at this point, it turns out that the limit of the function at x goes to 1 half is exactly the same as the value of the function because, well, if I approach this point either side, I just get exactly the same thing as the value of the function. Now, if we look at the point x equals to 0, then things are slightly different. At that point, the function is undefined, right? So the value of my function is undefined. There's a hole in my function. However, the limit is perfectly well defined. So the limit as x goes to zero here, so on both sides, the value of the function approaches the same thing, which turns out to be just zero. So the limit is perfectly well defined. So what's important to uh, note here is the statement f of a equals to l and the statement limit as x goes to a of f of x is equal to a, l, are not the same thing at all. These are very, very different statements. These two statements are not the same thing in general. So what this means is that uh, this is a statement about the value of the function at x equals to a. This is a statement about the behavior of the function when x gets close to a. Now, it may happen, like in this case, where the function is not defined, the limit can still be perfectly well defined. All right, but what happens now at x equals to 1? So x equals to 1 here, in this case, is quite interesting because the function is well-defined. The value of the function is just 2. Now, the limit is a little more subtle because if I approach the point x equals to 1 from the left, I get a different limit than if I approach it from the right. So I have to define now something more precise, which is called one-sided limits. So I'll do that in the next slide. So we write limit as x approaches a minus, meaning x approaches a from the left of f of x equals to l, if this is the behavior of the function when you approach a from the left or from below the value of a. And x of a plus here means that you're approaching from the right. So if I look back at my example at x equals to 1, so what do I get at x equals to 1? Well, first I get that the value of the function itself is just given by the black dot here, so it's given by 2. Now the limit as x goes to 1 minus of my function, this is that means that I'm approaching x equals to 1 from the left, so the value of this limit will be 1. However, the limit as x goes to 1 plus of f of x, so now I'm approaching from the right, so the value of this limit now is 2. So you see that the two one-sided limits are not the same in this case, which is what happens when you have a jump like this in your function. So what's the relation now between the original definition of a limit and the one-sided limits? Well, it's pretty easy. So we say that the limit, the full limit, so without you know minus or pluses, so the, 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 the true limit at a point x equals to a exists if and only if both the left-sided and the right-sided limit exist and are equal. They give exactly the same thing. So if I go back to my example here, well, the two limits, the left-sided limit and the right-sided limit, had different values. So the limit, the full limit as x equals goes to 1 of f of x, does not exist. We usually write dna to say that it does not exist. So what this stands for is does not exist. Great. So let me give you one more example just to make things uh, a little clearer. So suppose I consider a function x plus 5 uh, divided by x squared minus 25 for any real value of x except minus 5 and 5 where this is undefined. 
Well, okay, so before we draw the graph, we can try to simplify this function a little bit. So what we realize is that the denominator here is a difference of square, so I can actually write the function as follows. So the denominator simplifies as x plus 5 times x minus 5. And now, because I'm assuming that x is not equal to minus 5 or 5, I can actually cancel these two factors here. And I end up with the statement that this function is the same as the function 1 over x minus 5 if x is not equal to minus 5 and 5. Now I need to say that explicitly because now this would be defined at x equals minus 5 if I didn't say it explicitly, so it would be different. And it's undefined if x is equal to minus 5 or 5. So this is the exact same function, just written as a in a different way. Now if I'm trying to draw this function, what I'll get, well first there's a hole here at minus 5, it intersects the x-axis here at, at 1 fifth, so it will go something like this on the left hand side. Now here what we'll see is that it actually goes like this So this is the graph of this function. Now we could study the limits at various points here. What I want to point out is what happens at the point x equals to 5 here. So now you see that the left hand side limit goes towards a very very large number, while the right hand side limit goes to, towards a very very large number but now positive instead of negative. Right. So the two sided limits here are different. So the limit as x goes to 5 on my function does not exist because the left-sided limit and the right-sided limits are different. But there's also something very peculiar that's going on here, which is that the limits actually seem to go to infinity, right? The function, if you approach 5 from the right, the function just keeps and keeps increasing. And here it just keeps decreasing to very, very large negative numbers. Now, we haven't seen that kind of limits yet, so these are called infinite limits. So that's what we'll study in the next video.